Hello everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be doing a tutorial on CodePen on a project called Google EIs. Here's a preview on the project we'll be uh, doing. Here are SpongeBob. As you can see, his pupils are following my uh, cursor. So wherever it moves, the two pupils follows. And whenever I go to the middle, forming a cross eye, uh, the pupils will turn blue. And the description below, you will find a template so that you can follow along. So let's start by declaring our variables. So the first pair of variables we need is cursor X and cursor Y. The two variables will keep track of our user's cursor in the X and Y coordinates. Following, we want to set up the X and Y coordinates of our left eye and right eye. And here we want the center of the eyeballs so that we can compare it with our X cursor X and cursor Y and move our pupils accordingly. So let's set up left X and left Y, right X and right Y. So to calculate our X values, we can find the width of the screen, divide it by two and shift it left and shift it right, uh, depending on you know which eye it is. So to find the width of the screen, we can declare a new variable called width. And we can set that to document dot document element dot client width. Just like that. And now we can use this width variables in our calculations. So on the left x, we want to set it to width divided by two. And I found that moving it to the left 120 pixels is pretty good. And we do the same thing for the right eye. So right x, we will set it to width divided by two plus 120. And finally, for the y values, I found that 350 is very good. And here, 350 pixels means 350 pixels from the top. So we'll push, imagine this is y equals zero, this whole line over here. And 350, will push it down 350 pixels. So now we can set up our variables that holds the properties of our left eye and right eye pupil. So to grab the property values of these eyes, we can use get elements by class name. So let's set up our left eye and let's set it to documents dot get elements by class name. Put the brackets and inside here we want to put in the name that we named our uh, pupil. So for our case, we named it pupil left. And we want the first index of the array. And then we do the same thing with the right eye equals documents dot get elements by class name pupil right. And again, this returns an array, so we only want the first index. So now we can set up default values of our left eye and right eye. So to access the location, we can use dot style dot left. And whatever pixels we put here, it will be pushing the left eye pupil from the left that many pixels. So here we can put in 40 pixels. And as you can see from the demo, we have pushed our left eye pupil 40 pixels from the left. And we want to do the same thing with the top. So we can do left eye dot style dot top equals 40 pixels. And now you can see that our demo, that our left eye people is centralized. And now we want to do the same thing for the right eye. So we do right eye dot style dot left equals 40 pixels. And again, right eye dot style dot top equals 40 pixels. And before writing the functions, um, we have one last step and four more variables declared. Um, since style.left and style.top are both uh, in string formats, we want a way to represent these uh, using numbers. So we actually set up two variables for each eye. So we set up left eye left num equals the parse int. So this will return the integer value of our left eye. So we can copy and paste left eye dot style dot left right into parse int. 
And then we can set up the same thing with the top value. So T num stands for top equals parse ends. And once again, we can drag this left eye dot style dot top right into our bracket. And again, we repeat the same thing for right eye. So right eye left num equals parse int. And we can drag this right eye dot style dot left, copy and paste it, and then into here. Finally, the right eye t num equals parse int. And we're just going to copy and paste this again. And we can copy and paste using control C, control V. And now we're finally ready to program actual functions. So the first function we're writing is a function that updates every time our user moves our mouse. And within this update, we want to update our cursor X and cursor Y. So let's do that. So let's write documents dot on mouse move. And here we will set it to a function that takes in the parameter e. And within e, we can use dot page x and dot page y to get the location of our uh, x and y coordinates. So now we set cursor x to e dot page x. And we start like cursor y to e dot page y. And that will update our cursor x and cursor y every time our user moves his mouse. And now we're going to write a function called move eyes. So we declare it using a function, move eyes, and we can have no parameters in here. And our function move eyes will shift our pupils either to the left or to the right, to the top or to the bottom, depending on the X and Y values of our uh, coordinates. So here, let's try to shift a left eye to the left and to the right. To do that, we use an if statement. Inside the if statements, we want to say if cursor X is less than left X, which is also the same as saying if our cursor is to the left of the left eye. And since here we don't want our left pupils to actually um, be able to go off the screen or go off uh, eye, our left eye here. So we want to also keep a cap. So we want to say left eye, left num is less or is greater than zero. So here our left eye left numb should not be able to go past zero or go below zero. In that case, it will go over more to the left of the eye and we don't want that. So in here, while this is true, we can set uh, left eye left numb by minus one. So decrementing it by once, it will shift it to the left. So here we say left eye left numb or we name it L numb equals and we can actually decrement this by using minus equal. And you're just putting the number we're decrementing it by, which is one. So this would decrement left eye, left numb by one. And we want to update our left eye style to reflect this change. So we do left eye dot style dot left equals left eye L num. And this will shift our left people to the left every time our cursor is to the left of our eye of our eyes. Now we want to shift it to the right. So we do an else if. And inside this else if, we set, we say if cursor x is larger than our left x. And we have a move all the way to the right. And here I'm going to use the value 80. And it should be left eye, left num should be less than 80. And this time we want to increment our left eye L num. So we can say f left eye, left num plus equals one. And we want to update our style dot left. So we do style dot left equals left eye, left num. So now let's do the Y for the left eye. Here we can compare if cursor Y is less than left y. In this case, our cursor y is above our eyes. So we want to shift it to the top. And once again, we do not want our left eye to uh, go over. So we're going to keep the cap. And we do that by saying left eye t num is greater than zero. And here we want to decrement our left eye t num by one, therefore shifting it one pixel up. 
So we do the same thing as minus equals one. And once again, we update our left eye. But here we're doing styles.top equals left eye t num. We add an else if statement for moving down. So if cursor y is greater than left y, meaning is below us, and our left eye t num has not gone over 80, so it's less than 80, we can increment left eye t num, increasing it by one pixel, therefore pushing it down by one pixel. So we do increments by plus equals, and we do left eye t and then left eye dot style dot top equals left eye t num. And this will all be uh, the animation for the left eye. So here we're gonna do the exact same thing for the right eye. So um, if you guys wanna kind of copy and paste this and change everything to right eye, uh, it will work. But here I will just retype it. So we wanna say cursor X is less than right eye and our right eye left num is greater than zero. Here we want to shift our right eye to the uh, left again. So we will say, right eye, left num, minus equal one, shifting it by one pixel to the right, or to the left, I'm sorry, and updating our right eyes. So here we're gonna do style.left equals right eye, left num. Else if cursor x is greater than our right x, therefore we should shift it to the right. Um, we want to, also make sure our red eye does not go over our um, the frame. So here we want to keep it below 80. And now we want to increment our left uh, <clears throat> and now we and now we want to increment our right eye left numb by one, therefore shifting it one pixel to the right. And we want to update our right eye dot style dot left to reflect our change. And finally, we can do the Y for a red eye. So if cursor Y is less than right Y, and this will mean that our cursor is once again on top of our uh, red eye, and therefore we should move it up. And our red eye top number is greater than zero. Again, we do not want it to go over the eyes. In this case, we can decrement our top uh, value for right eye. So we do that by minus equals. And we once again wants to reflect our change. So we do styles on top equals right eye t num. And last else if statements, if we uh, have a cursor at below our right eye, so it will be greater than right y. And we haven't gone over the bottom. So t num is less than 80. Here we want to increase the value of the top by one, therefore pushing it one more pixel down. Once again, we do an update. So dot style dot top equals right i t num. And the final step to make sure we update our eyes every uh, so often, and you know, therefore keeping track of our cursor, we can set up an interval called set interval, and inside. The uh, parameter will put move eyes and we set it to five milliseconds. So this interval will run move eyes function every five milliseconds and it will give us a very smooth animation. Let's see that in action. So now we can show that the eyes indeed follows the cursor. And now it's important to add our last step, which is changing the color to blue. And um, this will only happen when our cursor is in between our two eyeballs, making it a cross eye. So here underneath last condition and move eyes, we're gonna add a new one. So let's add if, and we say if cursor X is greater than left X, and if cursor X is less than our right X, we want to change the color of our eyeballs. So to do that, we can once again access the style of left eye dot style dot background color. 
we want to set to blue. And to do the same thing with the red eye, so do right eye dot style dot background color. And set to e uh, set to blue. Here uh, we can just put an else. Here's when our cursor is not between our two eyeballs, and here we can just set it to black. So we can do style dot background color equals black. And we do the final step with the red eye dot style dot background color equals black. Save up our project. And now you see the eyeball should follow and turn blue wherever you know our cursor is in the middle. And um, that's it for this project. So that's all for today. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe and check out our other videos. Bye-bye.